Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. On Monday, I followed up the story about Lady Moloch, as we've been calling her, being barred from Holy Communion with the names of the bishops known to be supporting her bishop's actions. And I mentioned that she had made no formal response to that or no statement in response to the bishop's actions. That statement ended up coming on Sunday and was reported Monday evening, where Lady Moloch violated the censure and received our blessed Lord in the Eucharist illicitly. The story gives us an idea of who supports her and, more importantly, what the bishop can do next due to her defiance. So let's get into the story today, and I ask that you keep the woman that I'm calling Lady Moloch in your prayers as well as the person who probably enabled her the most, the man I have in the past called Sleepy Caesar, and pray for their interior conversion and repentance. According to Life News, not to be confused with LifeSite News, Lady Moloch knowingly went against the censure imposed upon her by Archbishop Cordelione and received the Eucharist illicitly at a parish in D.C. She ate and drank her own condemnation upon her. From the article, quote, in defiance of her own archbishop's decision to deny her communion because of her aggressive promotion of the Moloch ritual, new reports indicate Lady Moloch received communion yesterday at a liberal Catholic church in Washington. As Life News reported, Cordelione said he formally notified her this week that she can no longer be allowed communion because she is no longer in communion with the Catholic church by virtue of her repeatedly promoting the Moloch ritual. Cordelione, who serves her home district of San Francisco said he informed her of his decision Thursday after repeated attempts to speak with her about the grave evil that she is supporting. Just days later, Lady Moloch is already in violation of the communion restriction. According to Politico, she was noticed at the church and it confirmed she received the sacrament. Spotted, Lady Moloch at the 9 a.m. Mass at Holy Trinity in Georgetown, where she was given communion, it reported. There is no indication which priest provided communion to the Moloch-serving extremist, but before he took power, Sleepy Caesar learned that he could get communion at the Jesuit church. End quote. And I bet uh, Politico was tipped off that she was going to be there, that she wasn't merely noticed. But there's a lot to unpack here. The American head of state found out he could receive the Eucharist at a Jesuit parish in the imperial capital without issue. Not that any bishop has actually tried to impose a similar restriction on Sleepy Caesar, to my knowledge. Lady Moloch probably got her information from Sleepy Caesar when the canonical censure came down upon her, making Sleepy Caesar complicit in her sacrilegious communion. Not that he cares, since it really does look like his Catholicism is just a badge he wears for show. But if anyone is surprised that the Jesuits would do this, I'd like to hear why. And calling a Jesuit parish liberal is a redundancy in the vast, vast, vast majority of the cases. The priest there has openly stated that he would be happy to give communion to Sleepy Caesar, so my money is on him knowing full well ahead of time that Lady Moloch was coming to Mass and he helped her make her statement. In fact, I bet he gave her communion personally. And make no mistake, make no mistake, that was a statement of defiance against the authority of her bishop, against canon law, and against the moral teaching authority of the church. The priest is complicit in her defiance. Quote, Father Kevin Gillespie of Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Georgetown confirmed he would be happy giving communion to Sleepy Caesar, despite his lengthy record of promoting the Moloch ritual. Gillespie told America Magazine that Sleepy Caesar attends Holy Trinity sometimes when he is in Washington, D.C., and he is a man of faith. Everyone is welcome, the priest said. He's a man of faith, and I would give communion to him like any other Catholic coming up for the Eucharist. When Lady Moloch returns to her vacation property in California, she will not be able to receive communion. After Corleone's decision, her bishop in the diocese where she has her vacation home says he has instructed parish priests to implement the decision and refuse her communion if and when she visits their church. Now other bishops are speaking out in support, saying the decision is correct because it was her decision to extricate herself from communion with the Catholic Church by virtue of her aggressive pro-Moloch agenda. She professes to be a devout Catholic but supports the great evil of Moloch rituals with no barriers or limits and wants to force taxpayers to pay for it. End quote. I would be surprised if that priest wasn't a virtual apostate, to be honest. Archbishop Cordelione had been speaking to her for years about her position on all of this, and in September of last year, she actually laughed at his stance on the issue publicly and at his threats of action against her. From a Life News article from September 2021, that's last year, we get this, quote, Lady Moloch lashed out at her Catholic Archbishop Thursday after he described a Moloch Ritual Codification Act that she supports as 
legislation one would expect from a devout Satanist, not a devout Catholic. Asked about his comments at a press conference Thursday, she laughed, responding, The Archbishop of the city, that area of San Francisco, and I have a disagreement about who should decide this. I believe God has given us free will to honor our re responsibilities, she continued. According to a video that EWTN host Catherine Hadro shared on Twitter, any reasonable person with a basic sense of morality and inkling of decency cannot but shudder in horror at such a heinous evil being codified in law, Court alone said Tuesday. It is surely the type of legislation one would expect from a devout Satanist, not a devout Catholic, end quote. Where's the lie? How is he wrong in that assessment? The only way you get to that position that she holds is to either have formally but not publicly apostatized, or that she is imbibed of the errors of relativism. Benedict XVI smashed that error in numerous statements. This comes from a National Catholic Reporter article from a trip to the UK Benedict took in 2010, where he hammered this point to the Queen. See if this sounds like Lady Moloch to you. Quote, Benedict picked the UK as an important front in that war, not merely because it is itself a thoroughly secular society, but also because English culture has a global reach. The British media are followed around the world, and the Commonwealth of Nations, composed of former elements of the British Empire, embraces some two billion people. In his remarks to Queen Elizabeth II this morning at Holyrood Palace in Edinburgh, Scotland, the Pope warned against aggressive form of secularism, which no, long, which no longer value or even tolerates religious voices in public life. In effect, Benedict's strategy appears to be to turn the secular dogma of tolerance against secular culture, arguing that religious believers too deserve a place at the table. The Pope urged the UK not to forget the Christian foundation of its culture, which he said underpins its freedoms. The Pope implied that clarity about foundations is especially important as the UK becomes an ever more modern society. During an open-air mass this afternoon in Glasgow, Scotland, Benedict became even more explicit. The evangelization of culture is all the more important in our times, when a dictatorship of relativism threatens to obscure the unchanging truth about man's nature, his destiny, and his ultimate good, the Pope said, reviving arguably the most famous soundbite expressing the Pope's critical view of postmodern secular culture. How many winds of doctrine have we known in recent decades? How many ideological currents? How many ways of thinking? Ratzinger said on that occasion. End quote. For his part, Archbishop Cordelione has been accused by various nominal Catholics of having politicized the Eucharist, which is, quite frankly, to be expected. His response to that is actually very good, though, from the National Catholic Register, quote, What does it mean to politicize the Holy Eucharist if one is following church teaching and applying church teaching? One would have to demonstrate that one is doing that for a political purpose. I've been very clear all along. My purpose is pastoral, not political, he added. I am not campaigning for anyone for office. As a matter of fact, my preference would be for Lady Moloch to remain in office and become an advocate for the truth that the church teaches. And mostly, quote. Clearly, the archbishop was prepared for the pushback that it would get from the forces of Moloch that call themselves Catholic. And personally, I think he handled that pretty well. Let me know in the comments what you think of how he handled that line of grilling for those who claim to have the same faith as the rest of us. Let me know if you think he handled that well or if he could have given a better answer. Lady Moloch has cited her own number of children as her credentials to have her the opinion on the issue and that no one should have an opinion until they have had that many kids, which sounds an awful lot like she's expressing regrets over having had them. If I was one of her kids, I'd persistently be wondering if I was the one she regretted, but that's beside the point. The question at hand is, what is going to happen to her next? The new book six of the Code of Canon Law that Francis promulgated this year explains it. The bishop is first to painstakingly try to get the wayward Catholic back in the fold before imposing a sanction, which Cordelione did. He followed that to the letter. Then in section three, we get this, quote, subsection two, a penalty established by a law or precept binds the person who has deliberately violated the law or precept. However, a person who violated a law or precept by om omitting necessary diligence is not punished unless the law or precept proves, provides otherwise. Subsection 3. When an external violation has occurred, imputability is presumed unless it is otherwise apparent. End quote. That means she is known to be fully able to understand the law and the charges they are binding on her. And then we get this, quote, Canon 1326, subsection 1. A judge can punish the following more gravely than the law or precept has established. 
One, a person who after a condemnation or after the declaration of a penalty continues so to offend that from the circumstances the obstinate ill will of the person can prudently be inferred. That's her. Two, a person who has been established in some dignity or who has abused a position of authority or office in order to commit the de delict. That's her. Three, an accused person who, when a penalty has been established against a delict based on negligence, foresaw the event and nonetheless omitted precautions to avoid it, which any diligent person would have employed. Subsection 2. If the penalty established in the cases mentioned is in subsection 1 is late sententia, another penalty or penance can be added, end quote. The archbishop is free to apply their sanctions, in other words. That should include excommunication. I doubt he'll go there immediately. But what of the priests and laymen who assisted her in her violations of the censure? That would have to be taken up with the local ordinary, Cardinal Wilton Gregory, since they're under his jurisdiction, who was specifically chosen for his post because he is friendly to Sleepy Caesar and his entire program. So good luck doing anything about that. Francis will defend Cardinal Gregory and the choices he's made about Sleepy Caesar and Lady Moloch. And don't forget, the priest in question is a Jesuit, and Francis is functionally the head of the Jesuits right now. There is zero chance Francis will come down on that priest, nor will the local ordinary. Lady Moloch will continue to defy her bishop while in the imperial capital. And then if the rumors are true, she'll re relocate to Florida and find that well, a friendly bishop will tell her not to worry about the canonical censure despite it being in still in force. That by itself shows us that the Akita warning of bishops against bishops and cardinals opposing cardinals has already come to pass. Now, what do you think about this? What will the archbishop do next? Well, let me know in the comments, please, and like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Keep the woman I'm calling Lady Moloch in your prayers for her interior conversion and repentance before it is too late. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.